Father in heaven, we come before your throne in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and with the Holy Spirit. As the children of God, we ask that we would have uh, ears to hear, eyes to see, and understanding to be given and in increasing in wisdom because we know in this battle of Armageddon with the mouth, the truth is being attacked until we know that our day of super great testing comes when they enforce their decrees against us as we see in the signs of the times they're pressing forward fast and we need to prepare more and we we thank you for this day of rest that you have given to us and that we would commune with you in heaven as the gates of heaven are open and our lord and savior and our king and his angels are walking down up up and down in the midst of our churches around this world and may the remnant continue to move and press forward no matter what happens and not separating us from our king in jesus name we pray with the holy spirit to you abba amen happy sabbath and sabbath blessings to you all and you know we can keep seeing that our time of trouble which is referred to jacob's time of trouble because remember he represents israel and we're part of that whole sect from that time to today those who are you know following Christ and are contending with this world the children of God are counted as Israel and Jacob wrestled with God for the blessings and deliverance and we need to wrestle with God and pray and fight so hard to overcome and pray for the deliverance because you can see in our very lives that we're being highly tested through everything that Satan can throw our way. And a good reflection of understanding this is looking at Job's life in Job chapter one and the things that he went through and the pains and the sufferings. And this is going to increase and increase and increase because we're speaking the truth. And as we speak the truth, the enemy is going to do everything he can to shut us down until they get so tired of it that they can't, they have to kill us, correct? Yes. And so our trials and our tests and the persecutions and the things that happen today are a classroom for us to prepare for tomorrow. And in this classroom, we have to learn and understand that we've got to get as close to Christ as possible. And if we're getting as close to Him as possible, then we're reflecting Him as much as we possibly can in love and we learn to help each other. We don't do the things like Laodicea and, and, and tear everybody down to bring them to the fruits of Babylon because the fruits of Babylon is murder. And so now, when you look at the floor plan that we have found in the seven last plagues, we see how God will render back to them in the order which they gave to us, correct? That's, that was a very nice find. And a lot of the new people who are listening to this, like they said with uh, Brother Jershon, how we wonderfully explained the plagues because we went over it. And when you read the scriptures, it becomes alive. So when you look at this, you see two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is their entire cup. Once, they have, once their sins have been measured up to the top, then God will remember. What they have done, He renders back to them. It's very simple. So they have to have this one hour with the beast and Jacob's time in trouble very soon. Then God's wrath will pour out upon them. Just like your child has to do something bad first before you spank them. You don't spank them before they do it. Do you understand that basic principle and logic? Right, and this is what we have to keep illustrating to the people out there. Because they have questions and they're a little bit confused because they give too much attention to these other ministers who are dressed in fancy suits and standing in pulpits acting like the ministers of righteousness when they're nothing more than ministers of deception. And so in the seventh trumpet, it says, God hath remembered her iniquity. Let's, re let's read this. We'll go to the seventh plague. Chapter 16, Brother Daniel, if you want to read it. Yeah, it's verse 19. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. That's it, right there. So it says, God, what? That, ba that he had remembered? Babylon came in remembrance. That's past tense. It's not then, at that point. God 
remember, came into remembrance. That's past tense. Right, teachers? That's past tense. But these fallen churches can't understand that simple, basic English. All right, so when we look at that, let me ask you, in the first trumpet, in the first plague, did God remember? Did God remember them? Yes, yes. yes He did. So the cup of Babylon filled up, fully made the saints drunk, drink of the cup. Okay, her works were double punishment. So the trumpets, the trumpets, God's cup of indignation, the plagues, God's cup of indignation because the cup is a remembrance. So in, in the first one, why is God gonna pour out the trumpet and the plague again? Because he remembered the physical suffering, the spiritual suffering, the mental, the emotional, all those things that you're facing today that you're suffering for, God is going to remember. Everything that this system has done to you, God will remember it in the first plague. This is why you have what? Hail, fire mingled with blood. We're going to get to the point that we feel so bad, so helpless and so hurt. How many of you get offended by just someone possibly doing something to you today and you get hurt? No. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. That's why nothing shall offend them. The children of God, nothing shall offend them. But God did remember. He's going to remember everything in the first the second, the third, and the fourth. So, in their deception, we, we see and understand that hail, fire with ming, mingled with, with blood. Third part of the trees and grass is burnt up. That's the trumpets. In the plagues, noisome and grievous sore, not a boil, noisome and grievous sore. If, if hail was to fall from the sky, mingled with fire, and it hits you, what do you think is gonna happen? What do you think is going to happen if you're hit by it? Are you going to get a boil or are you going to get a wound? Wound. But yet they say that the reason why the, 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 the earth is turning blood, I mean the, the water is turning blood red, is because of algae. Algae, because red tide. If you look sometimes, the, the sea will turn red from algae. But that's not what the scriptures are talking about. It turns to blood. Be literal blood because why they shed the blood of the saints so God gives back to them you want to make my children bleed I'll make you bleed gives it back to them so let's look at what Lawrence has to say and Nicholas regarding this again so that everyone can see that this is also what the SDA church is uttering but people are so confused this is what I have to work with with people all around the world to keep explaining to them these things but Let's read this. Oh, I'll read it because you guys don't have this. This is from Lawrence's website, which Nick says it and Lawrence just copies it. The boils, the boils of the plague, number one, could come from anywhere, could come from anywhere. As it stands today, there is a chance that red tide may play a role. May, however, could be, not sure, the uncertain. And so they say red tide is red algae. They're weakening our God and saying that he's not going to cause you blood. It's from red algae. That's why they're not suffering. They're eating and drinking and giving into marriage. Yeah, the blood is from the hail. Fired with... Yes, the hail causes blood and it causes a sore. Do you understand that? It doesn't cause a boil. So God renders back to them and remembers them in the first. In the second, cup of Babylon filled up before probation closes. What did they do? What did they do to us? Back to the chart. Back to the chart, the long one, one through six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What they were doing here in the second, drunken by the blood of the saints, destroyed our food supply. Revelation chapter 17, verse six. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. God remembered her in the second one, in the second portion of this cup filling up. He remembered them. Remember the dark ages? God's remembering that time, Babylon, what you did to my saints. You killed millions upon millions of them. 
He's not going to forget them. Their blood screams, their blood in the earth screams out. Their death screams out to God. Remember us, O Lord. They want to be delivered from the grave so that they can wake up and praise Jesus. And so what happens in the trumpet, in the second trumpet, great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. Third part of the creatures and the ships in the sea destroyed. And in the second, the second plague, the reason why it's bloody waters is because of what you just heard. A great mountain burning with fire was cast in the sea to kill a third part. Why do you suppose again? Remember I told you this is a test question. Why do you suppose in the trumpets you keep seeing God say, I'm taking a third part. I'm taking a third part. I'm taking a third part. I'm taking a third part of your kingdom, Satan. Why? Thank you. Because in Revelation chapter 12, I believe verse 4, it said, Satan drew a third part of the stars from heaven, which are angels. You took a third part from my kingdom to be delivered into utter destruction in the end. God's going to render back to them still. He's remembered what happened in heaven. He hasn't forgotten. He's just giving them time. And so God keeps taking a third part from Satan's kingdom. And so God remembered them in that time, right? Yes. Not just in the seventh. The third one, the cup of Babylon filled up before probation closes. What happened? For they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Does not mean they are shedding the blood during the third plague, just because it's mentioned there. The shedding is past tense, have shed. God is remembering. So what does he do at this time in the third stage? A great star from heaven. This is a good one that you guys did not hear before. A great star from heaven burning like a lamp fell upon the third part of the rivers and the fountains of water. Star in the Strongs, Aster 792, probably from the base of probably from the base of number 476, a star as shown over the sky. Literally or figuratively, star. Symbolically, not literal star. Why? People would think that this is a literal star, okay? Or an asteroid or something because of the deceptions. Revelation 8 2. And I saw the angels having, yeah, and I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Seven angels. This is the third angel. Stars equal angels. Revelation chapter 6, Revelation chapter 1, verse 16 and 20 tells us that stars are angels. And so Revelation chapter 4, 12, verse 4 says, And he drew a third part of the stars from heaven. Satan drew a third part. So God sends an angel doing what? A great star fell from heaven, burning like a lamp fell upon the third part of the rivers and the fountains of waters and turned it to blood. That, tr that, that angel, boom, nailed the earth and caused the third part to go away again. Enjoy what you have to drink, the blood. You want to murder us with your mouth? It's going to be rendered back to you physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. God's not going to forget us. Number four, cup of Babylon filled up before probation closes. Yeah, oh, we can't forget that. In the third, many men had died because of this. They're dying, even from the first. Many men had died. It said that in the trumpets. <clears throat> and of course, this is why they removed the trumpets and put it in past tense. Because if they, if they read this today, they won't they will understand that many men are dying and they can't enforce a decree in the six. Okay, so cup of Babylon filled up before probation closes. This is the fourth now. Remember the fourth commandment, sun worship? Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. But Babylon says, remember my universal law that I bring to the world and worship God on Sunday. God says, no, 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 you better remember my fourth commandment because if you go against it, you will suffer this one. <clears throat> they had enforced Sunday worship, which is coming. We're in point three. We're almost in four. Yeah, 3.5. We're in the step of 3.5. We're between three and four. And they're about to enforce their Sunday laws. And so when they do this, God will remember them. So what does he do? In the trumpet it says, the sun was smitten. 
How? Revelation 19, 17. Remember, here little, there little. Revelation 19, 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying unto all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. So they're going to have a feast and a supper. So many are going to die in this time. But yet they're writing decrees in the sixth. So when you look at this, why does God smitten the sun? Why does he smitten the sun? So why does he turn it up? Or how? And where do you find it? Isaiah 30, 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold, as the light of seven days, in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people, and healeth the stroke of their wound. In the day. The day of God's wrath, correct? Yes. The wrath of God is in the day, which equals a year. And so, what happens when he cranks it up sevenfold hotter? Imagine, you, you're in the Philippines, you're standing out there and you're hot and you can't deal with it. You want to go sit in the shade, or you want to wear a hat. Well, imagine if God turns it up sevenfold. That's right. This is a study. I want you to interact so I know what's going, you understand what's going on. If he turns it up sevenfold, tell me, are you going to be writing decrees and sitting in the office? Are you going to be doing these things in the fourth? And so this tells you why in, in the sixth uh, plague, they're not making decrees. They're so dried up. Brother Daniel read the verse. They're so dried up by that time, they're wishing they were dead. But death fleed from them for their sufferings to be more intense. So those who want to sit here and preach and deceive people that the one hour with the beast and your Jacob's time of trouble is in the sixth, they're going to go through every single plague who preach this and believe it and teach it, God will bring them through every single one. You are the cause and the reason why my people were deceived, who could have been standing in my kingdom, and you think I'm going to give you a second chance? You're going to venture through it all, and I'm going to show you physically that that would never happen in my wrath. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. These deceivers, probation is closing. They are withering up spiritually, and that's why they are becoming so blind, they attack their own mom and kill them too with their mouth. And then the true ministers of righteousness who teach righteousness by the law to reflect Christ in every way, shape, or form, and learn to love people rather than to, to lie about them and to beat them up in this battle of Armageddon. And those who want to listen to them, you will partake in it. And those who want to sympathize with them, how do you think Satan drew a third part? They sympathize with Satan in the courts of heaven. So they want to sympathize with these ministers today? You're going with them. They're already drying up. They're already proving sevenfold more demons have come unto them. Their works have been going on for a long time and they're just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And so, when you look at that, the sun scorches men with fire and many men died. If it, if it heats up that hot, just imagine, you already have wounds from the first plague. If you have a wound, if you have a, even if you have a boil, go put a piece of, go put fire on it and tell me how it feels. Yeah. <laughs> If you, if you can't deal with those pains today, just remember you get a little wound and you scratch it in blood and it hurts and you can't sit down or something. Just imagine the double portion that they're going to get in this. So I don't believe these books and these ministers who sit there and preach that they're going to have strength in the sixth. And I hope you brethren around the world are understanding this, that that deception is taking a lot of people. This is why there's a remnant, Romans 9, 27, that will be saved, just a little. But heaven won't be void because this world's been going on for thousands of years. So after they're scorched and smitten, the cup of Babylon in the fifth one comes up in remembrance. They tormented the saints utterly. So this is why I said, where are we at? Here's the question, where are we at in this chart? If you're paying attention. Now, if we're in the fifth here, 
The torment of the saints. Now I want you to exercise in this study. This, hey, this is what I do all week. When you see me in my house and you don't see me walking around, this is what I'm doing. Where are we at in this chart when God remembers in the fifth? They are tormented. So look at this. Sunday laws are enforced, no buy and sell. They're taking away our rights. Oh boy, just imagine. You can't get anything from the stores to get these things. You can't even work there anymore. And now they're suffering. They're being tormented. And now they're being chased and they're being surrounded by this decree, by this global system that's coming for you. They're being tormented and tortured until in the seventh they're dried up and dead and the three angels message is silence. They divided up the three angels message and silenced it. But there's 144,000 who made it through all this. Nothing can touch them. Even today, you cannot touch the 144,000. They're bread and water, sure, because they prepared for this time. Got it? Okay, and so by the time the, the fifth remembrance of the trumpets and the plagues happen, smoke of a great furnace. The trumpets are in Revelation chapter 8, 9, 10, and 11. The plagues are in chapter 16. And we're going to get into 18 and 19 soon. But the smoke of a great furnace. Why was smoke of a great furnace? They turned up the sun sevenfold and it burns up everything. So there's a great furnace now. The sun and the air were darkened. They were tormented for five months in the fifth trumpet in the fifth plague. Men, it says in that trumpet, were seeking death already. <sighs> I want to die. What's wrong with this? I want to die. They desire to die. It's so bad. Men are seeking death. Please kill me. But it says, excuse me, death will flee from you. I'm not done with you yet. It's beautiful. I'm sorry. This is poetry to me. It's poetry to me. And God will laugh at their calamities and mock just as they do us today. They laugh at us. They mock us. It's going to be given to them. Don't worry. And so why do you suppose in the fifth that it was darkened? And this is a condemnation that light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Here's the remembrance removed their rights, removed all they have, censored them. No more money, no more funds, no more food. They killed most of the saints. They created darkness in the world by enforcing the universal decree that we're seeing they're going up to the high place to do it. God remembered it in the fifth. And let me tell you something. Remember before the plagues, how can they write decrees in the sixth when even before the plagues are poured out in the sixth seal, it tells us in chapter 6, verse 16, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. And who shall be able to stand this time? How can you write decrees, brethren, in the sixth? God's remembering in the first, fifth, First, second, third, fourth, and fifth already. How can you do this in the sixth? Because they believe book. That's my whole point in this. And so, look at this. Do you have the picture? We can't play a video. The earthquake. Do you have that on there? We can only show a picture. If we show a video, they're gonna take the video down. But we'll see if they happen. So look at this. When they get a 6.9 earthquake, or a 7.1, or even a 5.4, like those are their numbers they like. Look at these people running in the earthquake. Are they running to their offices to try to write decrees and kill us? No. They're running for their lives, yeah. hiding in the dens and the rocks. Before his great day, his wrath has come. So don't tell me what your books have to say because I don't care. I have the, the King James Bible. And so look at this. Now, here it is. We're in the sixth. This is why, Brother Daniel, Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. Read it again. This is why in Revelation chapter 16, verse 12, in the sixth angel of the trumpet in the plague. And says, the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up. 
Water represents people. Revelation chapter 1715. People. People. People, multitudes, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So the support to Rome is dried up. That's the very first statement in this plague, that they're dried up. So again, I'm going to ask the question, are they making decrees? I, well, if they make decrees, they have to not be dried up, right? It has to be reversed. Yeah. But what do they do? They change it. They flip it and change it. In the sixth, when you look at the why God brought out the sixth trumpet in the sixth plague, the saints were dried up. Look at this. Sunday laws, torment, more. We're starting to... I can't handle this anymore. Hey, guys. If you go to 2 Kings, I believe chapter 19, where you had Elijah, he said, let me die here, Lord, because they were, they were chasing him, and he was hiding. This is what's going to happen with the saints. He represents 144,000. They want to die. They're withering up. This is why your little offenses today that are withering you up, you're going to keep going through it until you pass it. That's right, the trumpet here will show you why they're dried up. Revelation chapter 9, verse 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them. Remember, this is symbolic. It's a vision representing, just like Acts chapter 10. And them that sat on the horses, having breastplates of fire, and adjacent, and the brimstone, and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. Have you ever looked, have you ever gone to a zoo and looked at a lion's eyes. Just imagine if you were in Africa and you were face to face with a lion. Think about it. You will be tormented. I've looked at a demon in his face, in his eyes for about two seconds and he disappeared in front of me, trying to pretend to be someone's dead grandfather. Spiritualism in the last days will increase. I saw it. His eyes were very cat eye penetrating scary. When you look at that torment, I took off and ran. I left, I got out of the house, I tried to play stupid, and I ran because of what I just saw. And I would see those things periodically in life. So, what they do to us, they're tormented. You're in the sixth, they're being tormented. Constantly remember this, this is the floor plan that we keep pointing out in, in, the, in the chart. They're being tormented. <clears throat> and the heads, were as, the heads of the horses were as like the heads of lions, and out of their mouth, issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Why do you believe, why do you think that these symbolic figures issued out of their mouth fire, smoke, and brimstone? Because that's what the threefold union did to us today, to our lives, and murdering us. So they're going to feel it. This is how I know they're going to venture all the way down here. You won't die in the fourth. You'll be preserved. Because you want to open your mouth, let me feel, let me give to you double of how you made my children feel. By these three, the third part of men were killed. But they're making decrees. That's how they're dried up. Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. By these three was the third part of men killed. By the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouth. The threefold union to destroy the saints. Remember, that's today. They're seeking to destroy us because we preach the truth of the three angels' message. So the threefold union of this goes right back to them, to destroy them in the sixth, not the other way around, where they surround the saints to destroy us. It's confusion, got it? This is more truth and light here. So if it's zipping past your ears and going out the other side and it's not hitting you, how are you going to go stand to your mom and your dad who you want to go to heaven? <coughs> they need to see these kinds of things. These kinds of things, prophecy wakes people up, not puts them to sleep. If it puts you to sleep, there's a problem. Revelation chapter 9 verse 20 in the trumpet, the sixth. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, a remnant, yet repented not of their works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols and gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. And the men were killed, dried up. 
This is why when you read the sixth trumpet, you see in the sixth plague, the result of that dries up their support completely. So you're not making decrees. Now, the last one before we close. When you look at the, when you look at the seventh, the cup of Babylon filled up. When you look at this, we're in the seventh now. Remember what they did to us in the seventh. Utter destruction of the saints, except for the 144,000. So in the seventh, there are some preserved. The wicked, are some of them preserved. The most wicked are preserved to this point. This is more proof I'm telling you and showing you that everything that they do today and tomorrow and what's to come, when probation closes, everything will be answered from the beginning of time in heaven to the very end. So utter destruction to the saints except for the 144,000, utterly destroyed the earth with their man-made calamities from their systems that they can create these disasters. Their man-made calamities utterly came against the three angels' message. They want to shut us down, center us, and close it out. So, what happens? The calamities. What, in, this, in the seventh uh, trumpet, in the seventh plague, what happens? It says, very simple, lightning and voices and thundering and earthquakes and hail. You want to do that to us today and hurt us? Look at all the people in the world and in China. Their families are being destroyed and torn apart. But we're sitting in peace right now because we have a message, but they're suffering so bad. So God renders back. I remembered you. I give it back to you. And in the plague, in the seventh plague that goes with the seventh trumpet, voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was great earthquake and great hail out of heaven, out of heaven. All wicked died by the glory of God. That's the truth. The great hail did not kill them. It was their suffering. You know why I want to bring this part up before we close? Because our former church says that all of them on earth died by the great hail, removing the power of our God and His appearing doesn't destroy them, it's only the hail. The tale of Inki. Alright, remember Inki? His tail, 3.3, ventures around the earth. His tail is what kills them. Let's, so let's read what they say here. You have both from both websites, right? Remember, Nick speaks, Lawrence copies. Copy-paste. <clears throat> yes, copy-paste. The hail will be traveling at an astronomical velocity when it hits its target. Rest assured, however or whatever it hits will not be there afterwards. Okay? All the wicked will die. We have Nick's. I really want to read his. Did you put it? I, I don't have it on my... Sh oh, wait. Yeah, it's on the eighth final page. Here's what the former church says. Nicholas Petula at SDR. 125 chunks of hail. Second coming... Yeah, 125 chunks of hail that fall on all the wicked at the second coming, killing everyone on earth. Further down, the seventh and final plague of hail ends all life on earth. He says all life on earth done by the hail. But we know it's the brightness of His coming. Our God kills them from the brightness of His coming. Not this heresies and false preaching here. Hello everyone, if you want to help this ministry spread the gospel around the world, please email us at sdc at sdcministries.org.